So, imagine the world of 1980s. The world is racing ahead in the field of computing technology. The powerful economies like the US are building supercomputers so powerful that they could change the course of science, military strength and global economy. But India, India had nowhere to go. We didn't have the technology, we didn't have the resources and the worst of it all, the Western powers were making sure that India doesn't even get access to any of it. And then comes the biggest insult in 1987. So Rajiv Gandhi wants to buy the supercomputer from United States of America. Why? Because we wanted a better weather forecasting system because India was suffering from droughts. But the response, a flat out no, this was outright humiliation. And what happened next, nobody saw coming. Instead of backing down, Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi decides to do the impossible. Build our own supercomputer. And so began one of the most daring, high-stakes technological battles in Indian history. Welcome to my series on stories that shape India's future. And this is the story of how a bunch of Indian engineers working in secrecy built the India's first supercomputer, Param 8000. And in this video, I'll talk to you about the humiliation that India faced, the mission that India took up, how India ended up shocking the world and the legacy that the very first supercomputer left behind for India's development and future. Get ready because this is a story of ambition, of defiance and an underdog victory like no other. And if you do feel inspired by such lesser known stories from our past, then do like this video and subscribe to this channel. Let's start the story. Okay, so the 1980s. Supercomputers were the ultimate weapons of power then. US, Japan, France were building supercomputers so powerful that was giving them unmatched power in the fields of nuclear simulations, space research, pharma industry, and more importantly, in the field of military strength. And India, we had nothing. We were nowhere in the race because we didn't have access to such advanced technology. We didn't have the resources. We didn't have the money. Basically, we were locked out of the future. And the worst of it all, the Western powers just didn't trust us. Why? See, back in 1974, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi had shocked the Western world by silently conducting our first nuclear test, Pokhran 1 codenamed Operation Smiling Buddha. Now this had shaken the powerful countries of the world at that point of time. They were stunned that how could such a poor country not only develop a nuclear weapon, but silently even test it without nobody else knowing about it. And from that moment on, the global superpowers and especially the United States of America had placed sanctions on the access to critical weapons. Basically, India could not buy any critical weapon, any high-end technology that could help itself build our own high-end technology. And therefore, in 1987, when Prime Minister Indira Gandhi asks Cray Research, a US company, to buy the supercomputer Cray XMP. Why? Simply because we wanted to build a more robust weather prediction systems. Because we really wanted to protect our poor farmers from the harsh weather conditions through better forecasting and predictions. But that is when things took an unexpected return. The response? No. Because the US said that having access to such a supercomputer, India could use it for military operations, for strengthening the nuclear program. And that is why they denied us the sale of the supercomputer. And instead, India had to make peace with a slower and a much lesser powerful supercomputer from the US. And do you know what was the hypocrisy about it? The US was just fine selling the same technology to Taiwan. So think about it. Was it really to restrict the progress of nuclear weapons? Or this was just about the show of power? to show the rest of the developing world who was really controlling everything around the world. And this was really to tell India, hello, stay in your place. 
So at this point, Rajiv Gandhi really had two choices: either to accept the insult and accept the fact that India would forever be dependent on foreign technology, or really do the impossible: build India's first supercomputer from scratch. But who would lead such a mission? Who had the vision, the sheer audacity to take on the global superpowers and building a supercomputer literally from scratch? And then a name emerged: Doctor Vijay Bhatkar, a man who had never seen this Western tech before. Was this mission doomed to fail before it even began? See, Vijay Bhatkar was a computer scientist. He he was an expert in parallel computing. Yes, he had this determination, but there were a lot of challenges along the way. India did not have access to any high-end global technologies. India did not have access to those powerful microprocessors that would have enabled the construction of these supercomputers. We did not have the resources. We did not have the money, and therefore this mission almost seemed absurd at one point of time. But what he had was this burning desire to prove everybody wrong, and that is when the most important discussion happens between Rajiv Gandhi and Dr. Vijay Bhatkar. So Rajiv Gandhi asks him, "Can we even do it?" And Dr. Vijay answers, "I have never seen a supercomputer because we just don't have the access to it. I have only seen a picture of the cray. But can we do it?" Yes, we can. Then Rajiv Gandhi goes on to ask him, "How long do you think this will take us?" Doctor Vijay answers, "Much lesser time than what it will take us to import the cray from United States of America." And then the most important question, Rajiv Gandhi asks him, "How much money will it take to build the supercomputer?" <laughs> Doctor Vijay answers, "The whole effort, including..." Building an institution, developing the technology, commissioning and installing the India's first supercomputer will cost us much lesser than the cray. Convinced, Rajiv Gandhi begins the mission of building India's first supercomputer. In 1988, Rajiv Gandhi establishes the Center for Development of Advanced Computing, the CDAC, and that is how, from a small underfunded lab in Pune, a group of Indian scientists begin the impossible dream, begin building something that took the United States of America more than a decade to build. But they were on a mission that was going to change the future of india's simple computing and of course there were a lot of obstacles along the way as i said india just did not have the resources right we did not have the high speed networking equipments that were required to build no access to microprocessors the semiconductors and you know what was the worst of it all global sanctions even if india wanted developed countries just did not agree to sell us the critical equipments that were supposed to be the brain and the heart of the super computers and that is when the india's famous jugaad system comes into play yes we do not have the powerful microprocessors but dr vijay's team does take a bold risk they line up a series of commercially available microprocessors and they link all of them together to create something called a parallel computing system this was a technology that even the west hadn't perfected but not only does india build it but they build it much better and that is how after just 3 years just 3 years of the beginning of the program india announces to the world which takes them by surprise india presents the world a first super computer param 8000 completely made in india The western world was so taken aback that at first they didn't even believe that India has actually achieved this. So Dr Vijay Bhatkar actually takes this computer to an international exhibition, benchmarks the supercomputer there and finally the world accepts India has done the unimaginable. Do you know why? Because it turned out to be 28 times more powerful than the very supercomputer that the US had denied us. We had shown the world what Indian minds could do and this started a revolution in India. Despite global resistance and despite limited resources, India 
had shaken the technological world and this prompted the US to observe that by denying India the sale they had made a grave mistake. Since the success of Param 8000, India has built a series of future generations of Param supercomputers which are spread across the nation. And based on the success of the first supercomputer, India started its first supercomputing program. And Dr. Vijay Bhatkar went on to establish the National Supercomputing Facility. These Param supercomputers have played a huge role in building India's modern nuclear program, space program, medical sciences and the defense industry. The question here is how many of us know about this story? Now in today's world when the western world again seems to be racing ahead in this dominance in artificial intelligence, don't you think that this story should be told to everybody to be a source of inspiration and to tell the world that what Indian minds are really capable of. So do share this story and become that source of inspiration. And yes, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel to keep listening to such inspirational stories from India's past, stories that shape India's future. See you later.